Here we have Karen with her garden creation using <laughs> recycled plastic containers. What's the medium you're using there? Um, well, down at the bottom, I've just popped um, a really good drainage um, potting mix, and then that's cow poo. Yep, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So once they, and I've sort of left it a little bit low. Yeah. So once they start to grow up a little bit, then I can put um, like that organic mulch underneath mm. it and keep it nice and moist. Yeah. So. And do you poke holes in the bottom of them? Yeah, yeah. They've got to. Um, Probably about five different holes. Yep. Like in each Good corner, drainage. And just in the middle. Middle, so yeah, you don't want too much drainage. Mm. But then again, you don't want where it's going to be all boggy and they're going to go a bit, you know, sloughy and icky on the bottom. Yeah. Well, so. But yeah, that's worked out well. We've got the coriander up the top, and then the rocket down the bottom. Well, the herbs. Some, some bok choy got little sage down there so that will look nice. Are they from seeds that you had or did you buy them? Yeah no I bought, bought the seeds Yep. and then uh, just pop them in the little plastic cups mm. and get, get like 15 for two bucks. Yeah from the cheap and shop. Just, yep just pop some holes in the bottom. So sort of half, um, always do half potting mix and half cow poo because I've found that that works the best. Mm. So uh, yeah, and it's gentle to the plants too, and they, you know, it's organic, so yeah. they seem to thrive on it. And over here we've got some prepared earlier. You'll have to talk through what you're growing because I can't remember oh, it all. That's <laughs> so these are, these are chai. The chai seeds that you'd uh, probably get in a, well I got these in a hill food store and they're organic as well. Yep. And they, um, they seed very easily, so I just put a handful in there and water them and off they'll go. So you can have your own chai rather than buying it because it's very expensive. Yeah. It's uh, sort of distantly related to the mint family, so you can have your own chai. Mm. And there's, um, that's Italian parsley, so that's fat leaf. And this was sort of sold as mint, but I don't think so. I think <laughs> that's peppermint. Was that from Bunnings? Yeah, it was in the little punnets. So, um, peppermint, spearmint, and... Because, yeah, they don't really know what they're doing, do they? No, I don't <laughs> think they've done any study. <laughs> um, yeah, but I can tell the difference between the different leaves. Yeah. And, um, like, mint, it's got a, a broader, fatter leaf, and it's darker green, so... Mm. Get more technical. And it smells like mint. Yeah, where this has got a little bit of a peppermint smell, so yeah. that's okay. I can make herbie tea out of that, so... Mm, toothpaste. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's some basil there, is it? Yes, yeah. Got to have basil. From seed. From our own seed, from um, the basil that we grew, mm. and then it went to seed. And then I just um, saved the seed and then re it. Fortunately, so it's not D Monsanto Terminator seed. You can no. replant it. I call them godly goodness seeds. That's right. <laughs> then we've got the zinnia. Beautiful there, so. colours. Yeah. Love flowers, it's really good um, like companion planting mm. um, because uh, a lot of the, the flowering plants will actually give positive things to the other plants here around, like uh, there are some insects that will be attracted to this, so this is almost like a decoy, mm. so it doesn't go onto your vegetable stuff. It's synergistic, is that the word? Yeah. 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 So we've got zucchini there, uh, so hopefully they'll twirl up. Mm. Like, Got a um, nice structure to grow on. Yeah, and they're, they're pretty. I mean, they can be. I mean, they they can be practical and they can be pretty, so they don't have to be just you know, boring old veggie garden. Mm. And what we got in the back? Um, we've got chives at the back and um, spring onions. So I'm sort of growing them in shade. So when we're bringing them inside, it won't be too much of a shock. Mm. And a bucket full of onions and a bucket full of carrots. Beauty. So these are all hot chili. So that's just like an old egg cup. You can you can reuse that just mm. for so only two because these are, are called cotyledons, so they're the first little leaves that come out. And the next set of leaves that come out, they're the true leaves. And once they start to get the little true leaves, then they're really good for transplanting. Also the bottom of the stalk will sort of tend to go a little bit purple 
as well, but um, yeah, hard to see. With tomatoes, it's like, yeah, it's this one. See, these are the wild tomatoes that um, we had a, a tomato that was growing just on the bank. No, yeah. I should obviously from a birdie. Um, but they were a good producer and it seemed to be uh, disease resistant um, to like the the sooty mold that we tend to get here. Mm. So these ones you can see are, are quite purple down the bottom. So that's sort of like a little indicator like please put me in something and we go because I'm going to Right, I see. Yeah, yeah. So what else have we got? Oh, we've got heart seeds, that's a tree jump up, so maybe fire eyes. They're really good with um, veggies as well. So um, lettuce, petunias, poppies, celery, garlic chives. So the goji berries, which we did from, we rehydrated, dehydrated um, goji berries. So I did them um, in South Australia when it worked. Mm. So, um, yeah, because goji berries can be quite expensive. They can be like, um, for a, a small little pot like that, they can be, just one can be up to eight bucks. Yeah. So, but it's good to know you can rehydrate them and grow your own. Yeah, that's it. Just like rehydrate them in um, like a glass of warm water, tempered water. Let them go for about 24 hours and they'll all plump up. Mm. Then you carefully like open the, up their little bellies and then scrape out the seeds like with the back of a knife. Yep. And then just pop them in the soil. So. And these are like little avocados. So ones that we've eaten and then yeah. have been planted and they're yeah. growing again. A little little lemon tree. So it's amazing that can get to a, a huge big tree. I mean that's like the same like with the with the mangoes as well. Mm. Massive trees. So. Mango. Oh. I've got little magnolias there but I don't know. They're not sort of doing much. So sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. Mm. Give it a go. It's fun too, so That's well, right. I think it's fun. <laughs> so, and then we've got um, our mangoes. Hopes and hopes. So, there's, they're, they're the Kensington ones. Right, yeah. So, uh, tend to be, I think, early to mid season. Right. Because there are probably about 15, 15, maybe 20 different types of mangoes. So, nice, compact little orange uh, mango. Mm. And we've got marigolds in the front of that's a, a little what's called a, a bibby um, cucumber. So they're little cucumbers, they're only about that big. Little cute cucumbers. Yeah, and they're nice and salads and that. But marigolds are, are really good because a lot of um, insects, well, sucking insects, don't like marigold. They don't like the smell that it gives off. Right. So it tends to keep the um, insects away. You should always have marigold in your vegetable garden. Yes. Absolutely positive. Do your pest control naturally. That's it. Um, and you can also eat the, the, the petals of the flower as well. So, like the marigold, you can gobble that. Yep. Um, they're nice in um, like winter salads and stuff. Mm. Part of the calendula family. And then we've got um, sunflowers with specials. You go on good. <laughs> Marty's over there. So not going to the hot wind sometimes knocks them around a bit. Yeah. So there you go, don't throw out your plastic containers, chop them in half and grow food in them. That's it, everyone can do it. No excuses guys. <laughs> <laughs>